an order of service for noonday on Monday, May 10th. God of resurrection, you have rolled the stone away and the tomb of our world has been opened wide. With the dawn has come a new creation. Let our celebration today empty our tombs, renew our lives, and release your power. Through the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives lights, light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Be them also as your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be made, then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 25 through 32. The Pharisees said to Jesus, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Why do I speak to you at all? I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but the one who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what is pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Word of the Lord. We are transferring the church's celebration of Gregory of Nazianzus uh, from yesterday to today. Gregory of Nazianzus, one of the Cappadocian fathers, loved God, the art of letters, and the human race in that order. He was born in 1330 in Nazianzus in Cappadocia, now Turkey, the son of a local bishop. He studied rhetoric in Athens with his friend Basil of Caesarea and Julian, later to be the apostate emperor. Gregory, together with Basil, compiled an anthology of Origen's work, the Philokalia. Two years later, he returned to his home, a town then rent by heresies and schism. His defense of his father's orthodoxy in the face of a violent mob brought peace to the town and prominence to Gregory. In 361, against his will, Gregory was ordained presbyter and settled down to live an austere priestly life. He was not to have peace for long. 
Basil, in his fight against the Arian Emperor Valens, compelled Gregory to become Bishop of Sassima. According to Gregory, it was a detestable little place without water or grass or any mark of civilization. He felt, he said, like a bone flung to the dogs. His, his friendship with Basil suffered a severe break. Deaths in his family and that of his estranged friend Basil brought Gregory himself to the point of death. He withdrew for healing. In 379, Gregory moved to Constantinople, a new man and no longer in disrepair, or despair. He appeared as one afire with the love of God. His flame, fame as a theologian rests on five sermons he delivered during this period on the doctrine of the Trinity. They are marked by clarity, strength, and a charming gaiety. The next year, the new Emperor Theodosius entered Constantinople and expelled its Arian bishop and clergy. Then, on a rainy day, the crowds in the great church of Hagia Sophia acclaimed Gregory Bishop after a ray of sunlight suddenly shone on him. Power and position meant nothing to Gregory. After the Ecumenical Council of 381, he retired to Nazianzus, uh, where he died in 389. Among the fathers of the church, he alone is known as the divine, the theologian. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has revealed to your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God in trinity of persons, give us grace that like your Bishop Gregory of Nazianzus, we may continue steadfast in the confession of our, this faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. As the sun rises higher in the sky, so may the Lord be exalted in our lives. As the spring flowers display their beauty, so may the Lord be glorified in our lives. As the fresh green leaves on the trees announce the spring, so may the Lord be known in our lives. Creator God, whose faithfulness is seen in the coming and going of the seasons, whose love is seen in the renewing of the earth, guard and guide us, keep us and bless us now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>